Hello everyone. How are you precious standers? Those of you that are standing for your marriages. Lakidra have come on here today to encourage you and build your faith. And before I do that, I want to thank all of my new subscribers. And thank you all precious standers for standing with me. And also for your prayers and your comments and even your support in the work of God. God bless you. It's always encouraging to me to see us come together and stand, not giving up. You know, I want to bring this word to you guys today, and I know it's going to build your faith. I'm coming to bring to you prophetic word. You know, believe God, believe his word, believe what he says about you. You know, we're going to get into the word today. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter five, remember, this is what God is saying about you, people of God. In verse 23, this is what he says. For a husband is the head of his wife, as Christ is the head of the church. He is the savior of his body, the church. That settles it. Your husband is wives, the head of you. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what has come your way. It doesn't matter because there has been a divorce. God's word stands now remember you have to have faith in his word if you're looking at what you see if you're trusting what someone said or if you you trust in what you're thinking it's going to be a problem you don't want to stand in the way of what god's word said about you god listen god's word shall be forever it is written and it cannot be changed the bible tells us you see it's time that you have faith in God's word. And remember, faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. So you must begin to know first about who God is, what his word is. His word is God. When God speaks, it don't return back void. It will accomplish whatever it is being sent. Remember, it is the word of God that created heaven's and the earth it is the word of god that brought everything to life and so when god says that your husband is your head he made it that way and that settles it now if you're looking at what you're facing that's one thing and then that is what's causing you to change your mind about what god said about you well then that's a problem because we walk by faith we walk by what the word says and that's it we we know that god's word is the final say it is in authority it is the highest authority that there could ever be who cares what naysayers are saying see we got to begin to trust the word of god you have to take god's word and see it as as the final say you have to begin to say my husband is my head and i am his body and that settles it just like christ is the head of his body the church i am my husband's body and he is my head just like god our lord is the savior of his body he covers it he clothes it he feeds it he nurtures it he empowers it so it is between me and my husband who is the head of me and that settles it devil take your filthy hands off my marriage is what god says it is my spouse is who god says he is you see you have to take your authority and same way with you husbands those of you that are standing for your marriages in verse 28 it says in the same way husbands are to love their wives as they love their own bodies for a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself but no one hates his own body. You see, your wife is your body, man of God. It says, but feeds and cares for it just as Christ cares for the church. And we are members of his body. So it's the same way between you and your spouse. You are a one body. And you have to tell the devil that and all hell that. And demand that your marriage be protected nothing could come in and separate it nothing can come in and hinder god's plans and purpose for your life and then it goes on and says in verse 31 as the scriptures say meaning as god says 
a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife and the two are united into one this is a great mystery but it is an illustration of the way christ and the church are one so again i say each man must love his wife as he loves himself and a wife and a wife must respect her husband and so when you don't see the respect when you don't see the love well it's because of sin it's because someone has given themselves over to sin and they are not walking in obedience and when you see that spouses those of you who are standing for your marriages you stand this precious people of god you begin to take your authority you go to god in prayer you go to god in prayer and you begin to ask the lord to convict of sin can bring conviction because the bible teaches that in john 16 8 said that says that the holy spirit when he comes he brings conviction and righteousness and judgment to come and so when you ask god to bring conviction you have to believe that god is going to do it and receive it it doesn't matter what it looks like you got to trust every word that proceeds out of the mouth of god no ifs no ands and no buts about it i'm telling you this is where the problem come in when we don't believe you have to know that you ask God to do it and it is done. And that settles it. And expect conviction to begin. Expect righteousness to come. Expect your marriage to be exactly like God said. Where you and your husband are one. Or you and your wife are one, man of God. Take your stand and trust what God says. That settles it. It doesn't matter what it looks like. God is waiting on you to put your foot down. You claim what he has given you. You take back. You say, no, devil, take your hands off. You're not just, you're not going to just come in here and take my marriage and, and run it the way you want. No, you're getting out. It's going to be as God says. And that settles it. And you begin to pray. Standards, precious people of God, for God to bring conviction and believe that it is done. It doesn't matter what it looks like. You declare it every day. And thank God, thank God for just begin to say, Lord, I thank you for the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. I thank you already in advance for speaking to my husband or my wife's mind. Men of God that are standing for your marriages, you just begin to say, I thank you already, Lord God, because I trust your word. I believe, Lord God, that I am receiving everything that I've asked for. I'm believing, Lord God, that it would be as you have spoken it. And, and we know that God will do what we ask when it's pleasing him. And we know that interceding on our loved one's behalf pleases God. Because Paul wrote it to Timothy. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, remember what he says. In chapter 2, he said he told Timothy... He said, I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Ask God to help them. Intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Why? Because God is doing it. And thank him for doing it, Timothy. And this is exactly what Paul is saying to us. Thank God for doing it. Thank God for asking, for giving you, hallelujah, what you've asked for. Thank God for helping your spouse, bringing them to conviction, showing them what is right and bringing unto them the things that he promised. Thank God for bringing unto you the things that his word has said about your marriage. You see, the Bible tells us even in verse three, this is good and pleases God, our savior, who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. And see, you have to be one with God. You have to believe God and be, be in agreement with him. Partner up with him in his word. When you read his word, receive it and know that it stands. You see, it is time that we walk by faith and not by sight. It's time that you have confidence in what God said about you. And that God would give you what you ask. You know, because that's what John the apostle wrote as well in 1 John chapter 5 he says remember guys he says in verse 14 and we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him 
anything that pleases him. And we know what pleases him. When we intercede, when we ask God to bring somebody out of sin, when we ask God to show them what is right, when we ask God to lead and guide them and set them free, this is what pleases him. And remember, he goes on and he says in verse 15, he says, and since we know he hears us when we make our requests, we also know that he will give us what we ask for. Are you believing, precious people of God, that God is giving you what you ask for? Are you rising up every day thanking him in spite of what you're seeing? Have you taken it? You know, we take the kingdom by force. Jesus has paid the price for us to come to the throne of grace and receive from God in time of need and trouble. Remember that. And so it doesn't matter what it looks like. Remember, God says, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined unto his wife, and the two are one. They are one. Remember, wives, your husband, he is your head. And remember, man of God, your wife is your body. God made it that way. God made it that way. It is to illustrate Christ and the church being one. And know that God is giving you what you ask. Remember the Lord says it in Mark. He tells us that. In Mark 11, he tells us that we must believe that God is giving us what we ask. He tells us in verse 23, 24, he says, I tell you, you can pray for anything anything and if you believe that you've received it it will be yours you see this is what the apostles were saying believe it and thank god for it know that you've received it it doesn't matter what it looks like you believe that you received it and it'll be yours you'll see it come to pass you'll walk in that peace you'll walk in that confidence you will find that you will be strong, hallelujah, walking in the power of God's might, standing your ground, telling the devil where to go, telling the devil it's over, he's out, he's through. Remember, you speak to that mountain, take your authority, you tell it where to go. You begin to prophesy, speaking the word of God every day, saying what's coming. I thank you, Lord. You know, you just begin to just thank him every day. Lord, I thank you that my spouse and I are one flesh. We are made in your image and in your likeness. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, for turning their hearts, hallelujah, back to you. You remember, that's his promise in Ezekiel 36, verses 25 through 27, what God says he's taken out of them, that heart of stone, and given them that heart of flesh. Have you asked the Lord for it and received that he has done it? receive and believe that it is done he says i'm washing their minds i'm washing their hearts i'm washing them with pure water cleansing them from all filth all sin you see and so that is exactly what the bible is saying in john 16 verse 8 god convicts them of sin he is the one to bring them out and you know he also promises us that the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, hallelujah, verse 26, it says, Then they will come to their senses and escape from the devil's trap, for they have been held captive by him to do whatever he wants. Remember, it is when we turn to God, God would change their hearts. God would bring them to this place of truth and they will escape. They will come out of the bondage, come out of sin, come out of adultery, come out of whatever they're in, come out of these ungodly relationships and you'll see your life line up. You'll see that marriage line up. You will begin to see everything happening according, according to what God says. But you have to have faith. You have to believe. And remember, faith comes by hearing. Hearing and hearing 
It'll keep you standing, hallelujah, walking in peace. You know, for the Bible tells us that as well. Remember, Paul talks about it in, in Philippians chapter 4. He says in verse 6, don't worry about anything. Instead, you pray about everything. Don't worry about anything. You just begin to pray, people of God. Pray and believe you've received it. Don't forget that. But then he goes on and he says, and tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. You see, it's all about asking and receiving and giving thanks. Asking, receive, and give thanks. Hallelujah. You ask God for it, believe you receive it, and thank him for it. But remember, he says, then you will experience in verse 7, God's peace. See, you'll find God's peace coming your way. You'll find the worrying has left. You'll find the fear has left. You'll find the anxiety has left. You'll find all this troubleness that's going on in your mind and in your heart leaving and peace will come. He says that which it will exceed anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. See, when you believe that you received it, you're now thanking God. You're now praising God. You'll have peace. You will have strength. Your, your heart will be guarded. Your mind will be guarded. All fear will be gone. Hallelujah. Worry will be gone. And then he says, but final, one final thing. He says, and now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing in verse 8. Now you fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. And keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing, then the God of peace will be with you. So you have to guard your mind. Because the enemy will come and the attacks will come, you know, and fight you in your mind. So this is why you have to think on what is good to guard your heart and your mind. And the peace of God will be with you. And this is what will cause you also to be holding on to what God said. So what will you be thinking about? Well, you'll be thinking about the promises that you and your husband or you and your wife, man and God, are one. And that your husband is your head wife. And that your your wife is your body man of God. This is this is what would bring peace. This is how you you fix your thought. You think about what is true. Think about what God says. And this will keep out the fear and a troubled heart and mind. It'll keep you strong. It'll keep you standing and taking your place against the devil. Because he's, he's trying to get you to give up, see. And so to keep yourself strong, you have to fix your thoughts on what is true. By thinking on what God said. Hallelujah. And knowing that God has given you what you asked. Well, what did you ask for? Well, you asked for conviction. You asked for a new heart. You, you know, in your spouse's life. You asked for God to come in and bring righteousness. You have asked God to come in and renew their minds. You have asked God to bring them to themselves. That they can come out of that lifestyle of perversion. And come out of, out of that life of sin. And come out of that rebelliousness. You see, it is important that you believe that you receive. Walk by faith and not by sight. It doesn't matter if there's been a divorce or split. It doesn't matter. It shall be as God says. Remember, his word is in authority. But if you don't have faith, the Bible tells us clearly we can't expect to receive. The word of God tells us clearly in James when we waver in our faith, you know. He says, don't expect to receive anything. So you don't want to waver. So this is why you want to fix your mind. Fix your thoughts. Keep your eyes. Hallelujah. Seeing what God says. Keep them before your eyes. Meditate on them day and night. Declare them and give thanks for them every day. That's somebody walking. They are walking in the things that they know God has given them. That is somebody that, that just know that it is done. 
and you just begin praising him. And you know, when, when that trouble rise up, you begin to rebuke it and say, I, I, I bind it in Jesus name. It is as God said. We are one and what God has joined together, no man can separate. We are one for I am my spouse body and he is my head. And that settles it for it is written. And that is somebody that is standing their grounds. You be like the persistent widow, precious people of God. You don't give up. You don't let up. You continue standing on what God said. And you'll see it all come to pass. You'll see that mountain crumble every time. Every time you bind, every time you rebuke, you'll be standing your ground holding up the shield of faith. God in your heart and your mind, walking in peace. Walking in that peace that surpasses all understanding. And the God of peace will be with you. Hallelujah. You see, and the enemy, he will try to come. Because the Bible says that he, he is after the seed. He's after taking the promises. And so this is why it is important that we keep our thoughts fixed on what is true. What is lovely. <laughs> what's coming your way. What God has promised you. You know, the Bible tells us that in Luke. How the promises of God or the word of God is the seed and the enemy would love to come in and take it from you. Because he do not want to see the will of God coming to your life. Entering in your life. You know the Bible tells us that in Luke chapter 8. Remember verse 11. It says the seed is God's word. Don't allow the enemy to prevent you from holding on to it and keeping it in your heart. You have to guard your heart. By meditating on only what God says. Casting down all the negative thoughts. Keep declaring and claiming the promises. The Bible says that he comes in to try to take it away. If you look at it in verse 12, it says the seed that fell. Remember the seed is the word of God. It says the seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message only to have the devil come and take it away from their hearts. And prevent them from believing and being saved. Remember, we cannot allow the enemy to come in and take away what God has said. Take away his word. Take away his promise. Take away the will that he has for you in your home and in your marriage. Who is, who is promising you that it is yours. You have to stand your ground. You have to believe it. With all your heart. It doesn't matter what you see. Because he's going to come in. To try to distract you. Because the Bible says. And in verse 13 it says. The seed on the rocket salt represents those who hear the message. And receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots. They believe for a while. Then they fall away when they face temptation. See what, what are you facing now? What, what has happened? Well when you find that that has happened. Troubles has rise has risen up. You begin to fix your thought on what your thoughts on what is true. What did God say? And begin to speak them over your life. Just begin to say, no, no, this is what God says about my life. And Father, I thank you for it. Lord, I receive it. I rebuke your attack, Satan. I bind them in Jesus' name. For my marriage is as God said it is. And I command you to get out. I'm not moved by what I see or what I feel. I'm moved only by what I believe. Therefore, I command you to go. Get out. And that is when you'll be standing your ground. Guarding your heart and your mind. You see, you have to cast down all those thoughts and replace them with the word of God. Meditate on them day and night. And yes, I know it's hard. It could be hard at times, but do it. Hold on and you'll see you have the victory in the end. And you know, the Bible says that in verse 14, it says the seeds that fell among the among the thorns represents those who hear the message. But all too quickly, the message is crowded out by the cares and riches and pleasures of this life. 
And so they never grow into maturity. See, when you let go of God's word and, and let go of what God says about you, not caring about what he promised, you lose. You see, that's why you got to stay focused. You got to stay focused. Don't begin to start caring about other things and let go of what God has promised you. You know, when you begin to take your eyes off what God says and get distracted and no longer care about what he says about your marriage and your spouse and, and, and bringing salvation unto them. You begin to hold on. Don't let things come in because that that is exactly what it would do. It would come in and distract and cause you not to no longer care about what God said about your, your home and your marriage. You see, this is why you have to stay focused. But, but the Bible tells us this in verse 15. It says, and the seed that fell on the good soil represents those with honest, good hearts. They, they represent honest, good-hearted people who hear God's word, cling to it. Remember, that's the key, clinging to it and patiently produce a huge so you have to be patient, begin to stand your ground. And in that moment, while you're waiting, while, while we're waiting, you keep your thoughts fixed on what is true. You just continue standing your ground. And yes, in those moments, it is a battle. It is a time where, where the enemy is going to come in and say, you know, God hadn't promised that to you. You know, you're not going to get that. Look how long it has taken. You've been waiting for, you know, so long and you're not seeing things happening. You just begin to bind up those negative thoughts. You begin to say, no, I'm waiting on the Lord. God has promised me and I believe I've received it. Therefore, I'm not letting go. It is written. I bind the works of the devil. You see, this is what you do. You begin to take your, I mean, take your authority. Focus only on what the word of God says and believe that you've received it. You'll have peace. Hallelujah. Because it is God's will. Remember, for your marriage, it is written to be an illustration of Christ and the church being one. And it is. Because your husband's wives is your head. You is his body. And husband, your wife is your body. Your marriage is as God says it is. Know this. No matter what you see. It's only designed to get you to give up and let go. But remember, we walk by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. And now I'm going to pray. Father God, I just thank you for everyone, Lord God, that is standing on today, trusting in you. Lord God, we just thank you for what you have already done. Thank you for what you have already given. Oh God, we give you the praise. We thank you, Lord God, that every mountain is thrown in the sea. Thank you for restoration and healing and deliverance and salvation, Lord God. Thank you for the marriages that are restored. We give you praise. We thank you, Lord God, for the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. Turning spouses back, hallelujah, unto you and unto their loved ones in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord God, that homes are healed. Thank you for giving them a new mind, a new heart, taking out of them that heart of stone and giving them the heart of flesh. We give you the praise for it on today, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. For we know that it is done. And all the people of God says, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Remember, precious people of God, it is done. Receive it, believe it, and it is yours. And until next time, remember that I love you and God loves you too.